All right, welcome to the Neuralink product demo. I'm really excited to show you what we've got. I think it's going to blow your mind. So current medical research, uh, it, we'll just go through what is the state of the art in medical research, uh, and, then, and then what's the state of the art in what consumers or, or people in general can get. So the current medical research uh, has shown that you can uh, read neurons in a human's brain. So there's something called the Utah array, which has about 100 channels per array. Uh, but it's, it's like, kind of like a, it's a bed of rigid spikes that's literally inserted with an air hammer. Uh, so, you know, that's slightly discomforting, I think. Um, and there's a big, there's, there's wires and a box on your head. And so it's some infection risk. Um, and obviously, it will look pretty weird if you're walking around with boxes on your head. Um, and in, in order to use it, you have to have an expert medical profession, professional there. And it's only been done in, in a few dozen pe people. So, um, but it is a, uh, it served as an important, important proof of concept that this can be done. So we, we did want to uh, point, point this out and, and show that this is, actually does work. Um, it's just not something that the average person could, act, could use effectively. And then in terms of what is currently available, uh, there is something called deep brain stimulation, where they put electrodes, a small number of electrodes, uh, in your brain, and will actually uh, zap your brain with an electric current. Um, and it's, it's, it's valuable for its uses, but it can't read or write high bandwidth information. Um, I would say this is sort of a, a bit like sort of kicking the TV, which does work, uh, but not always, and it has limitations. Um, Nonetheless, th this has greatly helped over 150,000 people, um, and it's, so it's, it's actually, just despite being somewhat of a brute force approach, it has been very effective for a lot of people. And this is what's currently available. So we want to radically improve this by multiple orders of magnitude, improve it by a factor of 100, then 1,000, then 10,000. So uh, going into the Neuralink architecture, what we've done over the past year is dramatically simplify the device. So we, 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 about a year ago, we had a device which uh, had a, a m multiple parts, including a piece that it had to sort of sit behind your ear, um, and it was it was it was complex, and you and you wouldn't still look totally normal. You'd have a thing behind your ear. So um, we've simplified this to simply something that is uh, about the size of a large coin. Um, and it, it goes uh, in your skull, replaces a piece of skull, um, and the wires uh, uh, then, then connect uh, within a few centimeters or about an inch away from the device. Um, and this is sort of what it looks like. Yeah. <laughs> this is our little device. Uh, it is, that, that thing at the bottom is just to hold the threads in place because they're just like little fine wire, wires. Um, I mean, fr frankly, to, to sort of simplify this, uh, what, what we're, <laughs> I mean, it's more complicated than this, but it's, in a lot of ways, it's kind of like a Fitbit in your skull with tiny wires. So, um, and it's, uh, yeah, so our, our current prototype, version 0 0.9, has about 1,000 channels. Uh, so that's you know, about 100 times better than the, the next best um, uh, consumer device that's available. And it's a 23 millimeters by 8 millimeters. It actually uh, fits quite nicely in your skull because your, your skull is about 10 millimeters thick. So uh, it fits, it's, it goes flush with your skull, it's invisible, and all you can see afterwards is this tiny scar. And if it's under your hair, you can't see it at all. In fact, I could have a neural link right now and you wouldn't know. Maybe I do. So. Uh, and it, it's also got all, all the things that you would expect to see, the sensors you'd expect to see in a smartwatch uh, or a phone, like uh, inertial measurement, temperature, pressure. Uh, so there's actually a lot of functions that this device could do uh, r related to monitoring your health and warning you about a possible heart attack or stroke or other uh, damage, as well as uh, sort of convenience features like playing music. Um, you can do a lot. Um, it's sort of like if your phone went at your brain or something. Um, yeah, maybe that's not a great analogy. Um, anyway, so it's also inductively charged. So um, it's charged in the same way that you, char you charge a smartwatch or a phone. Um, and so you can use it all day, uh, charge it at night, and have full functionality. So you would really 
um, yeah, it would be it would be completely seamless, uh, and uh, yeah, no wires. Uh, in terms of getting a link, so that, um, you need to have the device, uh, a great device, and you also need to have a great robot that uh, puts in the uh, the electrodes and uh, does the surgery. So you want the surgery to be as as automated uh, and, and as possible, and the only way you can achieve the level of precision that's needed is with an advanced robot. Um, so we're really looking for. Uh, great people who can help develop both the device uh, and the robot. Um, and we feel confident about getting the, uh, the link procedure, the, the installation of a link, done in under an hour. Um, so you can basically go in in the morning and leave the hospital in the afternoon. And it can be done without general anesthesia. So in terms of getting a link, like I said, it's essentially uh, you open a piece of sculpt, um, you remove uh, about a coin-sized piece of skull, uh, and then the robot inserts the electrodes. Uh, we'll talk more about that later. Uh, then the device replaces the portion of skull that was removed, and we, we basically close that up with actually super glue, which is how a lot of wounds are closed. And uh, and then you can just walk around right after right afterwards. It's pretty cool. So this is our surgical robot. And we actually ultimately want this robot to do uh, essentially the entire surgery. Uh, so in, in everything from, from in, incision, uh, removing the, the skull, inserting the electrodes, placing the device, um, and then um, closing things up and having you ready to, to leave. So we want to have a fully automated system. Um, so this, this shows you um, a sort of close-up view, uh, which I think is actually not too gruesome, uh, of the electrodes being inserted in the brain. And if you look closely, you'll see that um, it's, a, it's a little counterintuitive that uh, if the electrodes are inserted very carefully, that there is no bleeding. Um, and so the, uh, if you have very tiny electrodes, and if they're inserted very carefully, so that the robot actually images the brain and makes sure to avoid any veins or arteries so that the electrodes can be inserted um, with no noticeable damage. So you will have no noticeable uh, neural damage uh, in inserting the link. Yeah, it, like you sort of think like if you stab something with a wire, surely it will bleed. But actually, at a, at a really small scale, it does not. So what we have in pen number one is Joyce, uh, and she does not have an implant. So here's Dorothy, um, and in the case of Dorothy, um, Dorothy used to have an implant, and then we removed the implant. So this is uh, an, a very important thing to. Uh, demonstrate is reversibility. So if you if you have a neural link and then you decide you don't want it, or you want to get an upgrade and the neural link is removed, um, is it removed in such a way that you are still healthy and happy afterwards? And what Dor Dorothy illustrates is that you can put in the neural link, remove it, and be healthy, happy, and indistinguishable from a normal pig. And so on the screen, um, you can see uh, each, each of the, the spikes from the 1,024 electrodes. And, and then if, you, if she, yeah, she snuffles around, touches this snout in the ground, or you kind of feed her some food, pigs love food, um, then uh, you, you can see the neurons um, will fire much more than when you're not touching the snout. And uh, that's what's making the, the beeping sound. Uh, she's had the implant for two months. So this is a healthy and happy pig with an implant that is two, month old, two months old and working well. Yeah.